Hey everybody, it is me, the bipolar anti-hero. Doesn't really rhyme that well, but it'll have to do. We're back with another edition of the Breakdown Action Figure Edition. Um, the last episode, I showed you the three wrestling figures that I was going to be breaking down. Last episode was CM Punk. This episode is Thunder Rosa. Uh, this is from the AEW Unrivaled Collection, Series 9, um, number 77. Now, I don't know how they're doing this, if this means that she is the 77th figure that they've put out or, or what. Does that include, like, the deluxe ones that you're seeing now with, like, Britt Baker and the Cody Rhodes. The Cody Rhodes one looks really, really awesome, by the way, because he's wearing the, the the long robe with the um, uh, the um, the where he looks more like the guy from uh, the Boys. I don't, I haven't seen that show, so I forget the name of the character. Um, but the guy who's the bad guy that all the stupid people are identifying. With. So we're gonna go ahead and crack Thunder Rosa open, and we're gonna break down the figure and rate it on a five star scale the Meltzer scale just one second all right so we are back we got thunder rosa out of the package um uh man the way they're packaging these figures now it's just like they want you to keep them in there because uh, everything's so like shrink fitted and mold fitted to them um that's kind of annoying so uh this is the Thunder Rosa figure up close and personal. She's got her uh, ring jacket or over shoulder uh, vest. It's kind of like it doesn't have sleeves, so it doesn't fit through her arms. It actually fits over her shoulders. She's got her headdress with the black flowers and leaves on it. Um, I was hoping that this would be removable and it is. The detailing, let me go into this. Um, this is actually not just flowers. There is a skull in the centerpiece. That's, nobody watches this, so that's fucking awesome. Um, and so like part of Thunder Rosa's gimmick, at least visually anyways, is of course the half sugar skull. And for those who are familiar with Dia de los Muertos or our uh, Chicano, um, Mexican, they know the importance of Dia de los Muertos and the sugar skull and like what it symbolizes and its relation to death, not in death being permanent or even to be feared, but just part of life and remembering other people. Um, that's kind of a discussion for another time, but the cool thing about the accuracy of this figure is that relevance. So kind of the downside to this headpiece is I'm trying to see if there's like a spot specifically that this is supposed to go on. And it kind of just sits like on top of her head almost a little awkwardly. There's like a little part in her hair, like right at the crown. And so that's where that'll sit. So it sits a little off the hairline, a little bit back. Um, perfect, like, look and expression. Um, her likeness is really, really good. Again, doesn't talk about, like, real scan or anything like that. But, of course, all these, uh, when you're using likenesses of uh, individuals, like, real-life people, like, you want to have a, an, an accurate likeness. We're going to take off the the uh, ring coat, ring jacket. On the back, you've got her name, Thunder Rosa, big bold letters. Uh, this is rubber, but it's a soft rubber. It's kind of nice. Um, with the with some of the other figures, I was like with the uh, the Riho figure. She has like these two platings, skirt platings along the side of her her trunks, um, and it was like. Not exactly this material, but I would have really liked it had it been like a cloth. Uh, because putting the, the title belt on her is really awkward. Like the belt either has to go way, way high up on her waist, like up, up way high. Or it had like you have to adjust it to the point where it fits around the, the little plastic skirting. And it, it's just kind of an awkward fit. So this is kind of nice that this is like real loose and real flappy. 
Um, I like the detail with the, all the fringe coming off of it. It catches the light really well and all the metal rivets uh, holding the fringe in. It's real easy to like go back on and off because there's a little tiny gap between her, her neck and her hair and then you just tilt her head back and it really just holds it in place. So that's a really simple uh, fix for the accessory. And when you take it off, you don't lose a lot with her either you know there's the teeniest of gaps along her shoulders where the piece would go but you kind of just you can tilt her up so she's facing or you can tilt her head back just a teeny bit um and still get that effect um her body type i i appreciate that they're doing kind of like different body types for the characters um She's got like uh, an athletic build. Uh, they're also making these figures to scale. Like I put my CM Punk figure up on the on the shelf last night after reviewing him, and he's short only to the Luchasaurus that I have. He's taller than all the other figures, um, and I believe um, uh, Penta and. Um, Darby Allen are the, like the shorter male figures. Um, so let's look at her uh, like articulation. You see like her body type is really good because the gear that she's wearing would, you know, compress a little bit, but she's also an athletic MMA fighter. So she's not going to be like super busty or super curvy or anything like that. Um, you got some or gold ornamentation on, uh, on the top. There's nothing on the front of the trunks. Actually, there's a little or ornamentation like right here on the leg. So it's all along one side, which is pretty cool. Then on her, along her back, you've got the Thunderbolts for Thunder Rosa and then the, um, the ornamentation on, on the back of her trunks, which I'm trying to see. Uh, it does say Thunder Rosa on her trunks and there's a big flower. Um, it's kind of nice, like, with the detailing. Like, if you look really closely, you can see how, like, if this was fabric, how it's, like, stretching, and there's, like, the fabric lines. And the same is done across the across the back of the trunks, which I appreciate that attention to detail. Um, I haven't seen her wrestle a whole heck of a lot, but the, the trunks look a little... Like, I don't know if she wears trunks that are that high up on the on the hip. Um, I mean, maybe she does. I don't, I'm not super familiar with, like, looking at her backside, honestly. Um, we've also got really great detail work of the tattoo along her thigh. That's a great decal. And it's the only tattoo she's got. And it's not interfering with, like, the jacket or anything like that. So she's probably not going to get a lot of rub unless she falls off the shelf or you're moving her around a lot. It is in the hip joint, so you may run into some issues if you're posing her out and doing kicks and splits and stuff like that. Um, just a thought. Her knee pads are pretty cool because they're kind of uh, two-fold knee pads. There's the molded knee pad that's part of the, the, the kick guard underneath. And then there's the knee pad, the the padded padded knee pad that fits over it. It's got gold accenting on the back straps. On the, the left knee, you've got the rose uh, on, on the front of the knee pad. And then along her kick pads, you've got her, her thunder bolts for Thunder Rosa. And her, um, so her, her name or like her gimmick name is La Mera Mera. And so you got La Mera and Mera, um, right on the, the instep of her kick pad. And La Mera Mera, um, I had to look it up. I know I looked it up before, but I just wanted to be accurate for the video. It's kind of like the big boss, uh, head honcho. So like, La Mera Mera, like, for purposes of where we are right now, would be, like, the final boss, right? Um, so she'd be, like, M. Bison or Shang Tsung, 
Goro, you know, what have you. Um, who's the other dude, the, the skull head guy in, in Mortal Kombat? Um, anyways, the accenting, it continues to be really nice. You get, it's kind of hard to move these down, but like you get the fabric pulls and pinches on the leg pads. I don't know if those are supposed to be like knee braces or what, but they're not built like the knee braces that I've seen on figures. Um, you've also got the, the way the padding would move on the kick pads or be adjusted. You've got the movement on the shoe, the detailing on the, on the instep of the shoe. And kind of an extra is like right there on the back, the way the back of the kick pad sleeve would, would pinch in. Um, that's really great. Her hair is like super detailed as well. And it, it's pretty, it's pretty firm and hard. It's not like a, uh, like a soft plastic because it's all one mold. And she comes out with the, with the snookas, the, uh, the Jerry Lynn's. She comes with other accessories. Like these are really cool accessories because these are very much a part of La Meta Meta. But she comes with two extra sets of hands. So she, she comes with closed fists. And then she comes with like that same Kung Fu grip that I was talking about yesterday with the CM Punk figure. So they could latch together. We're gonna change out the hands and put those together. All right, so we've got these together, the Kung Fu grip hands. The nice thing about these figures is they're super articulated. You got that nice full ball joint on the shoulder. You got the, uh, the swivel on the tricep. You got the wrist turn, and then you got the double, the double elbow. You got the double knees as well. Uh, the knee pads make it a little hard to, to do a full like extension kickback. Uh, you can adjust them accordingly if you need to. So just hold them down a little bit. Pull them down to the edge of the kick pad. And then you can bring the knees back for more extension. So if you're going to have her high flying and extending or putting somebody in like a surfboard or what have you, um, great choices because... Uh, with with Thunder Rosa, like you could do that. She's a striker, but she can also be a submission submission specialist. Um, so this is kind of what I was talking about. Let me see if I can do it this way. Yeah. So she could put on like a bear hug on somebody and have the hands locked in place. So you can have her doing chokes, you can have her doing arm bars. Um, I appreciate that. The, the little attention to detail where like somebody might be like, I don't really care. Um, it's kind of cool. Um, when, when I bought my Penta, my Penta El Zero, uh, figure it was the first AEW figure I did and, he, or purchased and did a review on detailing on him was amazing. And so he has the hand doing the Zero Miedo. Um, and then he's got like two fists or two hands like this, just open hands. And then his, uh, like, this hand is all wrapped, right? So this hand has the glove on it for the Zero Miedo, or it's tattooed like that, right? And then there's just the hands that are both wrapped. Well, the other hand, the, the hand that doesn't do this, like it had an extra hand, right? Uh, two extra hands. And the second hand was the same hand. Like it even had the same wrap on it and everything. Like it was kind of funny that 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 happened um so this is this is another great figure um let me put her ring jacket back on the detailing on um thunder rosa is tremendous uh i i love that they are building these or making these figures to scale so that you're gonna have like your lance archers and your and your um um and your luchasauruses be your biggest figures and um and having like you know like thunder rosa and riho be to scale so that if you're standing them next to each other like if you have thunder rosa stand next to nile rose nile rose is going to tower over her and the jade cargill figure and everything like that i considered getting a jade cargill figure but um when i looked at the box it, like not the box but like the the display that they had on ringside collectibles 
she didn't come with anything. Like, she came with, like, extra hands. And I like Jade Cargill. But she didn't come with, like... Uh, I think it would have been cool if they had done, like, uh, like a couple of different heads because she's always doing, like, different things with her hair, right? Just, like, you got the platinum white hair and you've got, like, the, the... I think she did blue and she's done green and stuff like that. You could have done that as being, like, an extra accessory. I know it costs more to do that, but all she came with is an extra set of hands. And, you know, while I was doing that, I didn't want to, like, just buy a bunch of figures just to buy figures and get free shipping. So, like, I was very selective. Had to get the Punk figure. Uh, really appreciated the Thunder Rosa figure uh, at the time, I believe. Or was she? Um, I don't know if she was still a uh, champion or if Jamie Hayter took the belt. Um but I do have the Riho figure that has one of the belts, uh, so they can fight over the belt. And then I've got a TNA or a, a TNT title, so I can have uh, that be a belt that they fight, the men fight for as well. So we're looking at the Meltzer scale here, like the five star rating. Like, where does the Thunder Rosa action figure fit in a five star match? I'm going to give. The Thunder Rosa figure, four and a half stars. Now, everything being equal with the CM Punk figure, Punk is just more of an influence on me. And like, I love watching Punk. He had some, uh, his accessories were a little bit more, I mean, he had the microphone. He had uh, two, only two sets of hands. Um, he had uh, the, the ring jacket with Larry on, on the, the breast and then the picture on the back. Um, and so that was cloth. And then the microphone, you have to have the microphone, of course, with a CM Punk figure. He lost a couple of points, or he lost a quarter of a point because there wasn't the detailing in his, in his beard of it being gray um, and his hair being a little bit gray. Um, the Thunder Rosa figure, I think uh, the only thing that really kind of loses it for me with the Thunder Rosa figure and a four and a half stars out of five is not bad. Uh, the headdress is a little bit hard to get to fit on. I mean, now it's going on pretty easily. So I'm going to look like a jackass saying four and a half stars because of that. But um, overall, this is a great figure. I, I do like her expression, although I wish there was... Uh, you know, like a different option as well. Like if they'd given her another head uh, with a different expression as well, that'd be pretty cool. Or just more of like a neutral expression. But that is how Thunder Rosa is. She's a very intense character. Um, but when she's off screen, she's she's extremely um, uh, like a super humble character and stuff like that. I, like I don't think a lot of people think that. Uh, the detailing is excellent. So I'd be remiss not to bump her up to four and three quarter stars. The reason that Punk gets that boost, we're almost done here, is just because of my affinity for CM Punk. Once I watch more Thunder Rosa figure uh, <laughs> matches, probably going to grow to love the character even more. Um, but yeah, so four and a half stars for the unmatched. Is this unmatched or unrivaled? Unrivaled Series 9 action figure number 77, Thunder Rosa. 